What's up, fish friends and fish family? It's me, your favorite sword and military grade anti personnel mine, Claymore. This isn't really a full devlog because I'm still not fully done with everything I have planned for my next milestone, but just a quick status update to let you all know I am alive and working very hard to finish this game. I'm working on a game called Deep Horizon Coralium Genesis where you play as this little robot and in a similar style to Cold of the Lamb, manage a city builder in the form of this coral reef and embark on procedurally generated missions to gather resources, attract new fish, unlock new weapons and upgrades, and discover what these crystals are, who these other robots are, and what their goal is. I've made over 200 fish so far, I'm planning on making 300 for the first batch, so I'm over two thirds there, and I figured I would share how I make fish using Blender. By no means am I some authority on how to use Blender. My only Blender credentials are that I've made the donut and I did some Grand Abbott tutorials five years ago. So this video is more for people who are just curious about how I approach my fish modeling and maybe want to try and make their own. But don't hold back. I've made crocodiles, manatees, and axolotls with this same method too. You'll know this if you've been watching my shorts. So let's just hop right into Blender and get started. Select everything in the scene, and including the default cube, delete the default cube, and then add a new cube. Insert some good reference photos for the fish you're modeling. You'll want at least one that has a decent profile of the fish and a couple from a few angles to figure out the rest of the shape of the fish. Here for this bull shark, I have quite a few different reference pictures, but I'm mostly just gonna be looking at these couple profiles I have. Next, I split the cube down the middle with a loop cut, delete half of it, apply a mirror modifier so I have to model half the fish, and then I apply a subdivision modifier to smooth out the shape a bit. Just one subdivision isn't really going to be concerning for a game. The final quad count of this bull shark is only about 1300, and we're going to need all these quads for the shader deformations anyways. I model mostly in x-ray mode in the side profile for the first step, and I just start extruding from the cube and lining up the new vertices with the outline of the fish from this perspective. You shouldn't worry about any other views of the fish yet. I find that when I'm 3D modeling, the order of operations is pretty important for making things smoothly. And notice that I didn't actually model the mouth yet or worry about any of the fins. I'm gonna add a loop cut along the length of the fish and arrange these new vertices to line up with the thickest part of the fish. From the pictures, we can see the center of mass of this shark is kind of low on the body, so let's drag these down a bit. At the front of the shark, I'm gonna extrude the lower jaw and the upper jaw, still not worrying about any of the perspectives. And now that we have the silhouette of the main body of our fish, we're going to shape it from the top. So I'm kind of just freestyling this shape based on pictures I have and the other 10 or so sharks I've made in the past. You can find a reference picture that matches the fish from this perspective if you feel like you need it. Now the shark is kind of the right shape, the next step is going to be edge sliding these corners to smooth out the profile. Obviously the fish is pretty boxy because we've just been extruding a cube, but you can really quickly solve that by just double tapping G and sliding the entire edges up and down. Once the profile is looking better, the next step is moving on to adding the fins. I pretty much always start with the tail because it's generally just an extrusion like you can see here. That's because the tail is the narrowest part of the body, so you don't really have to worry about messing up the profile if you just extrude from the ends.
For the rest of the fins, I inset the faces below the fins, and I line up some of the vertices a little better, and then I just extrude from the inset face. When you're trying to do one of the fins along the mirror plane, make sure to uncheck boundary from the inset pop-up in the bottom left. This makes the inset line up the mirror plane, though I'm not actually sure what boundary is referring to. From here, I just keep extruding until all the fins are done. Something that I found out during this whole process of making fish models was you can hold shift while you're hitting the number pad view shortcuts, and it will make the views reference your current selections normals. So if you want to view a fin from the normal of the fin instead of the global y-axis, select the fin in edit mode and then hold shift while you're hitting the view key. From here, your fish is pretty much done. So now I move on to UV unwrapping the fish. UV unwrapping can be as complicated or as simple as you want. Mainly, you just want to make sure there's no overlapping faces in the unwrap and there's not a lot of unused space in the texture. I lately have been marking all my seams by hand because it makes texturing a substance painter a little bit easier. And then I go ahead and I bake the generated object coordinates into the vertex colors of the fish for use in my shader in Godot. You can do whatever you want at this point for animating. You can rig the fish or write your own shader or whatever you feel like doing. And then finally, I export my fish as both an OBJ and an FBX. I used multiple different versions just to keep things organized in my project and to help with the import into Godot. Sometimes I'll change the textures or models at some point, but not actually want to publish those changes into the game. So I use the FBX for my substance painter files and the OBJ for Godot. I'm not really going to go into much detail for my Substance Painter process because it's paid software and I don't really do anything that complicated in Substance Painter. I just use it because it saves me some time. I'm not really a big fan of the way painting models works in Blender. I just don't really like the ergonomics of it. You can definitely do the exact same thing of doing Substance Painter in Blender though. I spend maybe 30 to 40 minutes depending on how complicated the fish's patterns are, just adding in different layers. And then I add a black layer set to overlay for painting on details like the spines and the fins, the gills and the nostrils of the fish. And then I apply a blur slope or really any anisotropic filter like a Kuhara would work fine just to give the textures this spongy look. And then I add in the eyes. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching the video to the end. If you want to see more updates on the project, make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions this video didn't answer about modeling fish, you can join my Discord. I'm pretty active in there. The link is in the description. All right, guys. Have a nice day. Thanks.